We're gonna do a little sodium sweat collection today. The way that we do it is with a device called a macro duct collector. Essentially, it's a plastic disc with a capillary tube inside, and there's a tiny hole with a little bit of food coloring on the backside so you know how filled it is. And essentially, we're gonna put it on your forearm. It forms an airtight seal. I'm gonna take some tape and basically tape it on there. And we'll probably do one for our arm each so that we get two samples. And then after you're done with that 10 minute effort, I'm gonna collect and put it in your individual bags, come back here and analyze, and we'll know how salty your sweat is. Effectively, we want our drink mix to be as close to your sweat as possible. So if we know that your sweat is 700 milligrams per liter, that's ideally where we want scratch to be, but here's the problem. Your sweat might be 1500 milligrams per liter, right? It might be double that. And so the scenario becomes, we know how many bottles of say hyper or wellness you need to drink relative to a regular bottle of scratch. Or if you're lower, let's say you're 400 milligrams, super low, you know how many bottles of scratch per bottle of water you need to drink. So it ends up becoming a ratio that you guys are now informed about in terms of what you need to do to ideally drink to optimize your hydration. The question I'm gonna ask you guys that I want you to think about between now and the next time we stop is what causes you to become thirsty? Is what controls thirst between now and the next stop? Especially Lawson's thirst. He's so thirsty. I don't want it to melt. I will come back for it at some point. It's not yours, it is mine. <laughs> So Nobody that touched thing. this. Oh, yeah. That thing would not be a bunny. Keep, keep it in a well, well ventilated, things. cool environment, please. All right, guys, why do we get thirsty? Sodium to yeah. water, water ratio is off. Okay, yeah, sodium balance, sodium concentration, and the blood is off. Our blood gets too salty, we get thirsty, so we eat a meal, sushi, soy sauce, we get thirsty, we need water. If we sweat, we lose more water than salt, blood concentration goes up, we get thirsty. We sit around in an office all day, breathing too hard, salt calls up, we get thirsty. Answer me this question. If I'm drinking just plain water, just plain water, I'm losing a thousand milligrams of salt per liter of water. Your blood is about 3,000 or 3,500 milligrams of sodium per liter. Let's say I lose a whole liter of water. How much plain water do I have to drink to not be thirsty? You can think about it, discuss until the next stop, or if you've got the answer right now, bring it not enough not enough to replace the liter because you've lost salt also right to get the concentration back up you don't need as much water because there's not as much salt in the pool anymore so you don't have to fill the pool up to the same level in order to get the concentration just right and that your body cares more about the electrolyte concentration the sodium concentration than it cares about how much water you have on board Sweat sodium concentration vary based on hydration levels or you always sweat the same amount of salt every time you sweat? Generally speaking, there's a big genetic influence. So you as an individual versus Woods as an individual, you guys have your own specific range that you'll be in. But as you get more heat acclimatized and as you get more fit, your sw sodium sweat will be more dilute. So one of the adaptations to all of this heat training and getting ready for a grand tour is that you're not as salty as you would be, say, in the middle of the winter time, right? So there is that variance, there is that change. And so this value here is probably really representative of what we see in the summer. And this is why I wanted to get it as close to the tour to make sure that we got a picture of now rather than before. So that's a good question. Um, that being said, there's a huge genetic variance. Someone might be as low as say 300, 400 milligrams of sodium a liter. 
Someone might be as high as 2,000 milligrams of sodium per liter. On average, we see Grand Tour riders like you guys in the 700 to 800 milligrams of sodium per liter. Um, huge genetic variance because if you think about civilization and right. you know the salt trade, basically cities were built around where there was salt. And if you lived in a location where you lost a lot of salt but couldn't get a lot of salt, you were probably dead. So big evolutionary influences on our sodium sweat. It just needs to feel snug, but not too tight. Will the bag have any room to fill up? Or well, how does that work? So once it starts filling up, there's another port. And so if you overfill, it'll just push it out. Right. And then whatever gets captured inside the tube will stick in the tube. Um, and it's, it doesn't um, evaporate because the endings are too narrow. You're gonna do a 10 minute medial effort, right? Or an effort that makes you sweat pretty good. 10 minutes, no longer. That's it, guys. Sweet. All right. You guys ever, you guys uh, ever think about, we talked about electrolytes, we talked about water, but why do we put sugar in the drink? Now, what kind of sugar? Carbohydrates. What does the carbohydrate do besides give you fuel? Hydrate. Why? Uh, For every two molecules of sodium, right, in the drink, plus one molecule of glucose that's actively transported, it facilitates the transport of water into the gut. Basically, it opens up a, a, a channel in the, in the gut that moves in 210 molecules of water. So having salt and carbohydrate in a drink moves more water across the gut than water alone. Yo, dude, I got your sweat analysis test done. If I were to say extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, what would you think you are for salt loss? You'd say medium? Yeah. You're medium. So medium is about a thousand milligrams of sodium loss per liter, and you're about a thousand seventy nine, a thousand eighty. And to give you some perspective, for every seven to eight bottles that you drink on the road, you need to have like a hyperhydration or a salty drink, or you need to be consuming some of the savory foods or savory rice cakes. And maybe that's why you like the savory rice cakes. Like every time you stop, you go for the salty stuff, man. Yeah, it's so true. Keep on loving salt. Uh, there's not quite enough salt if the, if, the, if the swingers are making the drink a little diluted, so you got to go for the salty foods. And every, again, seven to eight bottles, you got to be getting a hyperhydration. Good job on intuitively knowing yourself. Keep up taking care of yourself with that uh, sodium intake during the tour. One thing that I was going to tell you guys yesterday is that, um, you know, the best thing you can do to maintain your performance over three weeks is to always be hydrated because uh, acute dehydration can actually cause red blood cells to die um, as, as, your, as your blood gets really viscous and thick. It's something called neocytolysis. It happens when like boxers try to make weight by dehydration. So stay hydrated and you'll continue to perform better. And a big part of that is making sure you get enough salt. All right, Woods. Well, thanks so much for all the help this week, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Bonjour, sur de France. <laughs> thanks, man. Au revoir. Bye -bye.